Well, now we're joined by Professor Luke O'Neill, Professor of Biochemistry at Trinity College in Dublin. Luke, good morning. Good morning, Pat. Now, I've had a number of queries uh, from people about mixing and matching vaccines. Uh, the idea, for example, I came across uh, one uh, woman who has an underlying condition and got one jab of AstraZeneca and is waiting, obviously, the 12 or 16 weeks, whatever was proposed for the second jab. Meanwhile, her husband has got two jabs of Pfizer and is fully vaccinated and she's the, the yeah. vulnerable one. So mixing and matching, yeah. um, there are some countries already doing it. It's a very hot topic, Pat, at the moment. This is the, one of the key topics in immunology at the moment is should, should this be allowed, basically. There's no reason not to do it, by the way, from the immune system's point of view. Other vaccines, we often mix and match, you see. Now, Spain have decided to mix and match. So they've got 1.5 million people there on AstraZeneca. They will now be given the option of Pfizer and Moderna as the second shot. They can stick with AstraZeneca if they want, but they'll have a choice now. They can go for Pfizer if they wish. And it's the first country to allow that. Now, Canada have just said they're allowing, allowing Pfizer as a second shot after AstraZeneca. So suddenly people are waking up to this as a possibility. And I, I mean, many of us supported Pat. It's a really good thing to do because you may get a better response, interestingly. Secondly, it'll speed up the whole process if you're not depending on the second shot. And I think in Ireland, especially the over 60s, they've been so put upon, Pat, and many, many would like Pfizer. And, and I would definitely support that now because I think that would give them a bit of a dig out for a start, the way they've been treated. So there's no reason, basically, what Spain and Canada are saying there's no reason not to mix and match, which is a really, really interesting development. OK, um, a number of people asking that very question, could I get Pfizer uh, after a first shot of AstraZeneca? The answer is, well, according to Spain and Canada, yes. Yeah. Um, don't know whether the EMA have come up definitively with an answer, but... Uh, you know, we, we wait and see, we wait, and hopefully yeah. we'll be quick off the mark. By the way, I just saw a headline flashing up that HICWA is saying that post-COVID immunity lasts nine months and not six months. Yeah, well, that, that's the latest guess. But another very important fact about this morning, I want to mention, there's a guy called Peter Doherty. He won the Nobel Prize for discovering how T-cells fight viruses. We, we all know him. He's actually a virus. He's Australian, and I know him quite well. You know, He is now saying AstraZeneca followed by Pfizer gives a great prime boost. So there we have a Nobel laureate giving the thumbs up to using uh, Pfizer after so in other words the the um, the opinion is growing this should be allowed and I think I'd, I'd, I'd press for it in Ireland as well um, uh, other news Pfizer are actually testing a pill to treat SARS-CoV-2 or uh, COVID-19 a, p a pill that's or right, an injection right. or something anyway that would sort it. That's right, exactly. Now, again, I think as we just said, there's a frenzy out there in the companies to try and find a tablet that'll kill the virus, an antiviral, you know. And and things are working, by the way, for a drug called budesonide, which you inhale. It's an inhaled steroid. That will be beneficial with people to early disease. Dexamethasone is being used as well for more late disease. Again, that's a steroid. And a drug called tocilizumab. But now, yeah, Pfizer say they have a drug which may well kill the virus, which would be tremendous. It's It's got a protease inhibitor. Now, proteases are very important for viruses, and they all have their own proteases. The HIV drugs, for instance, target its protease, same with hepatitis C. So SARS-CoV-2, it's called 3C-like protease, and Pfizer say they've got a really potent drug to block that. And if you block that, the virus can't assemble. It's very important for assembling the virus. And they've completed the phase one trial. They're starting the phase two. Uh, and they say by the end of the year, maybe, that tablet might be available, which would be tremendous. So it's, in other words, we'd now have a, a, a tablet to use if anybody tests positive. You could take this antiviral. So this would be a really good development. Mm. Uh, you sent me some of the science on, on, on this, and the whole, whole idea of the virus when it gets in. It's got a bit of work to do <laughs> yeah. to infect you. And th the idea of this drug would be to, to get in there and keep knocking down the building blocks Precisely. that they're trying to assemble. Precisely. Right. And the, the drug remdesivir does that anyway. The, the remdesivir targets another piece, another building block, if you like. And that was shown to decrease hospital stay. It, did, it didn't affect lethality, sadly. There was still a mortality. But if you get that remdesivir in early enough and stop that building block, that can show benefit. But this one looks even better. And, and Pat, this will work against any coronavirus, you see. This is the other good part. Because it was shown to work against SARS and MERS, the other two. And of course, if it should so happen, another coronavirus jumps, this could then be used there as well, you see. So that's another reason why it's important to develop these antivirals.